Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Tim Packer. Uh, today's episode is a bit of a milestone for a couple of reasons. So this is episode number 100 of my vlog. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something I'm pretty proud of and that's a nice big milestone. Uh, I think I've done 100 of these vlogs since I think it was last April when I started. Another reason this is a milestone is in today's episode, I'm going to finish this uh, piece that I've been doing with a palette knife. Now, this is the first major piece I've ever tried uh, using a palette knife on. I've played around with it occasionally before with knives on smaller pieces and never really had much luck. Um, but I am really, really happy with how this piece is coming out. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot more palette knife paintings from me going forward. So this is, uh, yeah, I literally could not be happier in terms of, you know, when I thought, gee, what would it look like if I put some of that extra texture that appears on my palette onto the actual painting? Um, this is kind of what I had in mind. And especially with this latest birch tree, I'm just loving it. So if you uh, want to come along with me as I finish this piece, then I'll get into a little bit about how I do the birches. Uh, stick around. <laughs> So I've been playing around um, with the birch trees now for, for a couple days of painting. Um, and I think I've kind of figured this out, how to do it. I'm actually really, really pleased with how the birches are coming. And I kind of painting them the same way here um, that I do with the brush. Um, and I've left this part here kind of just blocked it up top and I'll actually get to that later and we'll do a close up. I'll show you how I, how I actually paint the colors on there. Um, but the basic premise is the same as the way I do it with a brush is I paint that kind of the darkest kind of bluish purple tone uh, down the middle of the tree and then just gradually go warmer and lighter towards the front, bringing the paint in and cooler and lighter towards the back to give it that, um, that bounce light of the, of the light of the sky coming in on the back. And then just using the tip of the, of the, uh, the knife to do that little rim light along the edge. Um, but I'm very excited about how this painting is coming. I think this potentially is going to be one of the best pieces I've ever done. I know, um, the one added bonus that I'm getting from this that I really wasn't, wasn't aware was going to happen is that by putting the colors on really, really thick, they just seem to have so much more intensity and vibrancy than when I put them on, um, fairly thin on the canvas. So it just seems like everything, the, the saturation has just been pumped up like 15 or 20% on this painting. And we've also, oh, we've also crossed another milestone that just this week we passed 2000 subscribers on this channel. So thank you for all of you who subscribed um, and please spread the word to your other artist friends. Um, I'm going to switch now to, I'll do a close up, uh, kind of pan across my palettes. The one thing I've really, um, realized here is I need an awful lot more paint out and I need to have a lot of subtle variations of color mixed, um, on the palette and a lot of it, because again, you end up just going through so much more. So I've actually got three palettes on the go here and one of them where I really have all of my subtle mixtures and the other ones where I'm drawing most of the paint from um, but I found I was wasting a lot of time like mixing colors with this knife and this knife's not the best for that that little diamond shaped one is is the one I'm kind of best at with mixing so I've mixed a lot of uh, a lot of color whenever I start getting low on one I just force myself to get get out the little knife and mix more colors it just makes the painting process go much more and it's um, I used to notice this when I when I used to teach a lot of workshops, there's nothing worse than, you know, you start to run out of one color on your palette. And what I would see students do, they would just make color choices based on which colors they had left. So if you started to run out of yellow, all of a sudden you just didn't bother putting yellow out um, or putting yellow on the painting. Uh, so it's a good idea to force yourself whenever one of your color, not, so these aren't the colors out of the tubes. These are the colors I mixed on my palette that are all the colors in the birch trees. If one of those mixtures starts to get a little low, then I've got to stop and mix a whole pile more. And it, it kind of, it seems like it's interrupting the process, 
but it makes the painting go much faster and it makes it go better because every time I go to the palette, I'm basing a decision on which color I'm going to based on which is the best choice, not based on which colors do I still have available on there. Um, and so, yes, I'll, uh, I'm going to get, uh, see if I can get the camera up close here. I may have to get camera to come in and hold the camera for me and I'll do a, uh, work on the birch tree and do it in close up so you can actually see it transpire. So you can see I've got this basic uh, purpley blue tone on here that's heading a little more towards uh, warm kind of in the purples on this side and a little more blue on the other side. And what I've found is a really effective way to suggest the birches is just to come in with warmer, mix or warmer more red or violet mixtures on the side towards the sun. Just grab a paper towel. That's the other thing I'm finding here is I have to have a paper towel in my hand to clean my knife. Uh, initially I was lazy about that, but I was getting very, very muddy colors. So if you want to keep the colors fairly fresh, then the one thing I've discovered is that you need to keep cleaning the knife as you draw one color into the other. It gets um, very muddy. So again, having all of these colors pre-mixed on the palette makes that painting process um, go much faster. If you're ha having to stop and mix all these variations uh, each time you go to your knife, it's going to take you forever. And that was actually what I was doing initially. Um, and so yeah, and so it's not even enough uh, to have like, you know, a, a violet, a blue, an orange, you've got to have, or at least I've found it helps to have a, a lot of different variations within here so that each, each time I pull up, for example, this kind of peach color, it's slightly different because even within that the area on my palette where I've got the this peach color um, on there. In some areas it's a little more magenta, some areas it's a little more orange. And so just by varying which area of the palette I'm going to to get the paint, it varies the hue or the value or the intensity so that it's not looking all the same. And now I'm going to that even lighter, warmer peach color. And then when I've gone to do the rim light, I just put a little bit of that light mixture, almost yellow, on the tip of the knife. And one thing I guess I should say too is I haven't done any research or I've consciously not looked up on the internet about how to paint with a knife. So I'm kind of figuring all of this stuff out for myself. And the reason for that is if you've seen a lot of my videos, you know, I talk about, you know, one of the ways to have a very successful career is to create great work with a unique voice. Um, and I kind of believe I've got enough experience with painting that I can figure out how to manipulate the paint in a way that I'll be happy with it, with these knife paintings. Um, and I, I actually am extremely happy with how it's working out so far. But the reason I didn't look up any techniques is because I may be do, using this knife totally wrong according to what the accepted um, practice is of how you use knives to paint. Um, and I actually in some ways hope I am doing that because that's the one thing you know I've found and again you've heard me say this before if you paint like everyone else your paintings will look like everyone else's and so if there's an accepted way of using palette knives, um, if I do that, then even just the effect of the way the paint is placed on the canvas will look like everyone else who uses palette knives. 
but if I'm doing this um, wrong, so to speak, or not according to the way that traditionally palette knives are used, then there's a really good chance that my palette knife paintings are potentially going to look different than other people's palette knife paintings. Um, and that's a good thing. And so, yeah, I've consciously made the decision that I'm not going to going to look at all about, you know, what is the, what are the traditional ways to use each of these different knives? Cause these knives come in a variety of different, different shapes and sizes. And I'm just figuring it out what works for me. And hopefully some of that will be totally different than the way that other people paint with knives. And if that's the case, that's a good thing. So you can see this side of the tree is fairly well resolved. And then we'll go to the other side. I'll just do this little area here, but we'll come in with some of the lighter blues. And that's basically the way I've painted all of these birches. And I have to say that that added texture and that added vibrancy um, that the thicker color seems, seems to uh, suggest um, is an effect I'm really, really happy with. I think these are, you know, for the first time ever painting with a knife, I think these might be some of the best birch trees I've ever painted. So I'm very excited. This is kind of tough because I don't want to get in the way of the camera. The other thing I guess I should mention is, I think I mentioned it in one of the earlier episodes, I'm getting much, much uh, more confident and competent in using a knife to put paint on the canvas and to get it to go pretty much where I want it to go and to get it to do pretty much what I want it to do. Um, and that's in, I think I've probably spent maybe 30, 30 hours so far on this painting, maybe a little more. Um, so it's just like anything, it just takes practice, but, uh, I do also think that the, um, you know, probably 35,000 or so hours that I have handling a brush, um, has made this a lot easier than if, if someone, if you're out there and you're going to try doing this, but you're not really, really experienced with handling a brush, then you're, you're kind of starting right from scratch. But all of the, those hours of painting I found have, uh, have paid off with using the knife because I'm, I've gotten pretty good at getting the paint to go where I want it to go. And that happened relatively quickly. Okay, Cameron, do you want to pull the uh, camera back a little so you can, can see me and the painting? And the other thing I'm finding with this, again, I do end up getting a lot of paint on my fingers. Uh, but again, I'm using the water-soluble oils, so that means I can wash up with soap and water. Uh, my hands, I have been thinking that I might actually um, at some point switch to using traditional oils because I haven't used water at all to clean the knives. The only thing I've used it for is to clean my hands. Um, so at some point I may actually switch to, uh, traditional oils. Um, and there's a few, whether I end up wearing gloves or you can coat your hands with Vaseline so that the paint uh, will wash off. But for now, I'm continuing with these. So that's how I've been doing the birches. Um, I'm going to kind of cut this off in a sec here and I'm probably just going to come back. I'll come back maybe when I'm doing the last little touches because these, some of these trees, are going to be dark trees so they're going to be in the dark browns um, and you know kind of reddish browns and maybe bluish grays um, but uh, yeah I thought I would stop at this point and let you know how the birch trees are going um, and uh, yeah we'll come back when this is almost done. Well here's the finished painting. Um, I have to honestly say it has been a long time since I've been this excited um, about a piece. Um, and the general reaction seems to be from everybody, wow, uh, including my two boys and my wife. So I can't tell you how happy I am um, that I finally made the decision to get these knives out. 
and play with them. Um, on, on social media as well, this, the, the love for this piece is going crazy. So many people are saying it's their favorite piece yet. And I have to say the camera doesn't really do it justice. I'm gonna switch now to some close-ups uh, for you so you can actually see um, what that textured look looks like up close. Um, but that putting on of the thick paint just seems to add a whole different level of intensity. Um, and I thought my paintings were very colorful before and probably as colorful as they could get. Um, and as one comment uh, just got on Facebook, uh, said he said, you've dialed the color up to 11. And I think that's really what it looks like. So this, um, this was definitely a good thing to do. Um, I think this is actually going to have a profound impact on my work going forward. I think you'll actually be able to look at, you know, this is Tim up until he had painted with a palette knife. And this is Tim after painting this painting. Um, and so I'm just so incredibly excited to, to be going forward. Um, and to dig deeper in the knives. I'm also so glad that I decided to actually document this and create a video of it um, because I do think it is going to be a pivotal moment in, in um, my growth as an artist. And that also just gets back to that larger kind of issue of, you know, how important it is um, from time to time, even when you're really happy with how your work is going, how important it is to kind of challenge yourself um, and step into process mode a little, a little, and also to kind of never settle. Like I, that series that I did on the stained glass um, style, I liked that, and I could have very easily kind of got stuck there, but I just kind of thought, no, that's not it. Like if I, if that's it, I would rather paint the way that I had been painting, you know, for the last few years. Um, and so it's about, you know, don't settle too quickly. Uh, keep searching because this, I have to tell you, I actually love this painting, I think, more than any other landscape I've ever done. I, I found the process as enjoyable, although it was a little challenging um, just because I was getting used to the knives. But in particular, as the painting went on and on and I became more comfortable um, with using the knives, I came to enjoy it more and more. Um, and I'm really excited now um, to move on to do some more um, palette knife paintings. And now I'm going to, this really answered for me kind of the scale of the stroke that I want to be using. Um, and so I, I think it was a, well, I know it was a really smart decision to choose to go really big here. Because if I had gone small, I would have got caught up just in my lack of control of the knife. But here, um, because the, the image was so big, or the canvas was so big and the, and the composition so simple, um, I was able to play around with the texture and not having to get it exactly where I wanted it, especially in the early going. Towards the end, I actually got much more accurate with the knife um, and being able to use it. But now what I'm gonna be doing, I think I'm gonna focus on some smaller pieces, um, but the scale will probably be similar to this. So there'll be probably some very tight in shots with some big birch trees, but almost like if you were to crop in on various areas of this painting. So um, thank you for joining me uh, on this journey. Um, I, I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty proud of myself and uh, pretty happy and pretty excited about what the next pieces are going to be coming down the pike. So I welcome your comments and questions. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.